Hi, this is Roger Pugh again, and I want to thank you for watching this YouTube video. And if you like it, if it's a blessing to you, please subscribe and click the link at the bottom saying that you like it. Uh, I want to speak to you today from 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5. Uh, the title is The Danger of Being Under the Influence. Uh, I read on the internet about uh, an individual who was driving drunk and uh, had a great crash in Carrollton, Kentucky. 27 kids and teenagers actually were killed. 34 were injured. And it was considered by some to be the worst drunk driving accident in history. Uh, there can be some dangers in driving drunk. Uh, but, but there's also dangers in being under the influence of sin. Sin is anything that we say, do, or don't do. Uh, sometimes it can be a thought pattern in our lives, an attitude in our lives. But it's anything that is displeasing to God. And when we are living in patterns of sin, uh, it, it brings heartache and it brings pain to our lives and it prevents us uh, from realizing everything that God has for us in life. Uh, for a person that doesn't yet know Christ, sin is actually a barrier between them and God and uh, it actually brings the, the wrath and the judgment and apparently also even the penalty of an eternity in hell. And so this is not something that God wants us to have to deal with. So he has provided a way in his son, Jesus Christ, for us to be forgiven and changed and helped to live uh, a life that is honoring to him. Uh, so sin is the enemy. Uh, sin is kind of like a cancer that needs to be cut out in our lives. And in this scripture, John is, apparently has some people in this church he's addressing uh, that have an ongoing pattern of sin in their life, and they haven't admitted that to themselves and they're unwilling to deal with the sin, and yet they're claiming to have fellowship with God. And so he's kind of speaking into this situation uh, to give them some clarity and help them make some good decisions in their lives. And uh, so uh, we need uh, to look out for that sin in our lives and keep it confessed to God, uh, ask God to help us repent of it through the Holy Spirit so that we won't miss out on his best in our lives. And the title of my message is The Danger of Being Under the Influence. Um, <clears throat> this I'm going to read in verse 5. It says, This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light, and in him there is absolutely no darkness. If we say we have fellowship with him and yet we walk in darkness, we are lying and not practicing the truth. If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So the danger of being under the influence. What is the danger? Well, first of all, when we're under the influence of sin, we oppose God's purposes. We oppose God's purposes. He says God is light. He uses this metaphor of light and darkness to, to kind of contrast two ways of life. The way of light is the way of purity and goodness and holiness or set, being a set apart uh, to God. And, uh, and the way of darkness is the way of sin and rebellion uh, and uh, opposition to the things of God. And so uh, when we sin, we oppose God's purposes because God is light. In Him is no darkness at all. And so when we choose the darkness of sin, we set ourselves in opposition to God. And that could be a very dangerous thing. Uh, in the book of Genesis, uh, the Bible describes uh, Lot, uh, Abraham's nephew. And uh, Lot chooses the plain of Sodom rather than the land of, of Israel. And he goes to dwell there in the plains. And he, then he pitches his tent towards Sodom. A little bit later, he's living in Sodom. And then he's in the leadership of Sodom. And uh, this place 
was a place of great wickedness. And so Lot, in, in, in immersing himself in this culture and immersing himself in this wickedness, was influenced in a negative way in so much that he and his family, in some ways, were in opposition to God. Uh, I believe Lot knew God, and he, he, was, a, he was a believer and so forth, but uh, he was led astray by sin into opposition against God. And the Scripture tells us that after they left Sodom and, and God destroyed Sodom, that uh, he and his daughters went up into the hills, and uh, these these two daughters actually, because there were no men there, they said, well, we want children. There's no men up here. And so they made a plot. They got their father drunk. Uh, they had sex with their father, and both of them became pregnant by their father. And uh, this, this, uh, this sin was indefinitely in opposition to the goodness and the righteousness and holiness of God. Any of us can fall into that, uh, easily if we're not careful and l begin living in these patterns of sin. It's so important uh, that we keep our sins confessed, we repent of those sins, and choose to follow God. And so the danger of being under the influence is that we oppose God's purposes. Secondly, uh, we hinder our spiritual fellowship. By fellowship, I mean that communion or, or interaction between us and God that is sweet and between us and the people of God. Uh, there is a supernatural fellowship for the people of God. Uh, when, when we know Christ, we have a relationship with Christ, and He comes and lives within us, uh, God opens the door to His presence, and we can have a communion with God that is so sweet and real and powerful in our lives. But it also connects us to other people who know Christ, so that as we interact with them, uh, and, and provided both of us are walking with Christ, there is this connection, there is this uh, communion between us because we know Christ. And so <clears throat> this, this spiritual fellowship is hindered. If you've, if you've ever uh, gotten in a fight with someone in your family and they said, don't touch me, you know, um, this, is, this is kind of an example. Uh, just as our human relationships are affected when we do something wrong. So also our relationship with God is affected by our sin and our relationship with other people. And so these, these things are hindered. And it's one of, these things are one of the, the, the best things, uh, our relationship with God, our relationship with others, uh, two of the best things that could ever happen to us in this life. Uh, God builds us up and He strengthens us and He refreshes us uh, through this relationship with Him and also with the people of God. And so as we uh, keep our sins confessed and we repent of those sins, uh, we're able to enter once again into that fellowship with God as his people. Now, if you don't yet know Christ, uh, the first step is to have a relationship with him. And uh, I'll mention a little bit more about that here in a moment. But um, so it opposes God's purpose. It hinders spiritual fellowship. Uh, the danger of being under the influence, it also delays God's cleansing. Uh, it says if we, if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So uh, our personal choices to keep our sins confessed, to repent of those sins and to choose to follow God, uh, these personal choices uh, bring the fellowship with God and with His with His people, but also uh, start the work of, of cleansing. Uh, we're cleansed when we come into relationship with Christ, and that's once for all time. But uh, God then do, begins to do a work of cleaning us up and, and helping us grow in our walk with God. This work is called cleansing as well, and uh, God helps us grow to become more like Him. And so uh, when we're sinning and we're under the influence of sin, it delays this cleansing work in our lives. And as God does this cleansing work, we become more like Him. We grow closer to Him. We have more power in our prayer life. Uh, God speaks to us more vitally through His Word. Uh, fellowship is more real and so forth, as we've mentioned. And so it's very important, and, and our sin delays. It's kind of like uh, putting up a barrier between God's cleansing work and ourselves 
so that we are stuck in the same place or really moving backwards in, in our uh, relationship with God. So confess that sin and repent of that sin. And then finally, the danger of being under the influence is that it promotes self-deception. It promotes self-deception. We all as human beings have a tendency to rationalize our sin. Um, <clears throat> if, if you've ever uh, noticed this, we often tend to point out the sins of others and rationalize the sins that we have in our own lives. Uh, it doesn't take too, too, too many times of being around other people and hearing them talk to understand that's what we do. Uh, sin has this effect on us when we continue in sin that we begin to have this self-deception in our lives. And sometimes people get so far down that road, they don't even know what's wrong anymore. Uh, they have not listened to God for so long, and they have become callous to the things of God for so long that they, they don't even hear the, the, the Holy Spirit within prompting them of sin to confess it to God uh, as they once did. Such a dangerous thing. And self-deception also brings damage to our relationships and uh, damage to the work of God in our lives. And Jesus said this, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He's speaking of the truth of his teaching. But it's also true that the truth in our own lives uh, as we confess our sins to God is a freeing thing and it releases his power to help us grow and to help us get into the light of his truth. So sin is a danger. The danger of being under the influence is that we oppose God's purposes, um, that we hinder spiritual fellowship, we delay God's cleansing and we promote self-deception. If you've got sin in your life today as God's child, Confess it to him. Uh, he's promised to forgive it. Uh, and then trust him to do his cleansing work in your life. And ask God to help you genuinely repent through the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't know Christ, understand Jesus lived the perfect life you couldn't live in your place. He died the death you and I uh, deserved uh, because of our sin. Uh, he took the wrath and the justice of God upon himself. Uh, and was separated in fellowship from the Father on the cross. He said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, and he said, It is finished, paid in full. And then he died and gave his last breath. Uh, on the third day he arose. And the scripture says, Because Jesus died and rose and paid that price, if we'll choose to surrender our life to him and we'll receive Christ in faith, uh, he'll forgive us of our sins and he'll give us a home in heaven. Let me encourage you just to say a little prayer in your heart. Uh, maybe uh, speak it out loud where you can hear it. Uh, and say, Lord, forgive me for, for being a sinner. And uh, convict, convict and change me. Uh, I choose to surrender to your purposes, to follow you. And I trust you to help me with that. And I receive you into my life. Uh, I want you to be the leader and the Lord of my life. I choose to follow you and I trust you. Come into my life and make me who you want me to be. And if you pray that to God, he has promised in his word, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, if this has been a blessing, hit the subscribe button or the like button, uh, both, both if you would. Uh, thank you for your time.